The footprints in the lunar soil, seen in the hundreds and hundreds of photographs, have been capitalised and made iconic by historians and space enthusiasts alike. And yet, the presence of these footprints calls into question where these photos were actually shot. Ralph René was the first to pick up on this discrepancy. As he wrote on page 7 of his book, Notice the sharp footprints and tyre tracks. A man who tracked various animals in the Australian desert pointed out that clear tracks in deep dust require moisture, otherwise they will only form indistinct depressions. I've done some tracking of my own, and I instantly knew he was right. The only tracks we can leave on a sand beach, no matter if the sand is fine or coarse, is near the water. There are some ultra-fine man-made materials that will take a track at normal temperatures, but I know of no dry natural soil here on Earth that has that property. There can be no moisture on the moon, especially during the daytime when the surface temperatures are about 250 degrees. Couple this with the vacuum of space, which drastically lowers the boiling point, and any water in the dirt will boil away in seconds. And yet, Every picture allegedly taken on the moon shows clear footprints. This anomaly must obviously have touched a nerve, as the Mythbusters devoted a section to it when they released their special on the Apollo moon landing conspiracy. Someone actually told me a good one about the footprints. The idea is that the astronauts couldn't leave such distinct footprints on the moon because there's no moisture in a vacuum, and the moisture is what hold the footprint together. So how are we going to test this one? I think we're going to need a bigger vacuum. Outside M7, Tori sets up the demo with the closest thing he can find to lunar dust. I decided to borrow my grandfather for this experiment. And, uh... I don't think my grandma will mind because, well, there's my grandma. Actually, it's plain old sand, one half of which Tori moistens. Now, conspiracy theorists say that this clean of an imprint is impossible because you need moisture, and since there's no moisture on the moon, this could not happen. Now, uh, I'm going to demonstrate what they're talking about with the sand here. I have dry sand and I have wet sand. We're going to have Carrie put on a moon boot, not a moonwalk. Okay, so the answer is no. She's going to step in both, and we're going to see what kind of impression is left behind. Okay, ready? Yep. All right, do the wet. The wet sand is definitely cleaner than the dry sand. Yeah, you've got some really good hard lines in the wet sand. Yep, the moisture makes the difference. Without it, the imprint is indistinct and nothing like Buzz Aldrin's famous boot print. Now all we need to do is go to the moon and try this for real. I'm just kidding. We don't have the budget. To the moon, Tori! To the moon! Come on out here and give me a salute. Carrie Grant and Tori are tackling the moon landing hoax theories that involve a vacuum. Some of the first words spoken from the moon's surface answered the simple but powerful question. It's almost like a powder. What did it feel like? I can see the footprints of my uh, boot in the fine sandy particles. But did Buzz Aldrin really make such an impression on the moon? To find out if moon boots make boot prints, Tori's borrowed the real deal. So look what I got, a real moon boot. Wow. Uh, isn't that cool? <laughs> that looks just like Adam's. Yeah. So this is an, the actual article. Yep. Now all we have to do is put it on the moon stomper. Smash it in some dust and see if it leaves a footprint. This conspiracy theory is pretty interesting. They say that because there's a vacuum on the moon and there's no water vapor... Does that fit? You feel your toe there? You can't leave a clear imprint from your boots the way they did in the photos from the lunar landing. I'm not so sure about that. With just 840 pounds of lunar material returned to Earth from all of the Apollo missions, there's not much of it to go around. So for this test, NASA has given us a lunar regolith simulant. It's manufactured to test equipment that is going to the moon. It's very similar to lunar dust in the fact that each particle is very sharp. Dirt on Earth it has been weathered, so it's very smooth. So this is as close to lunar dust as we can get. That's likely to be the key to this myth, a comparison of the physical properties of sand and lunar regolith. 
down here, a footprint in dry sand collapses because the weathered particles can't bind together without water. But up on the moon, other bonding agents are at work, one of which, the irregular and jagged shapes of lunar dust, could cause it to stick together in those famous boot prints. Will the irregular shape of lunar regolith, in conjunction with the vacuum, result in a clean boot print and bust the myth? All right, so this is Mythbusters' first step on the moon. So it's one giant leap for myth kind. Oh, I think we just went like 20 steps backwards. <laughs> Give it a shot. All right. The rig is ready to take its one-legged step, and the vacuum chamber has been uh, vacuumed. Boot stop, vacuum. Here we go. In three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> take that! Yeah! It works! In your face, conspiracy theorists! Yep, it really does work. Moon landing one. Conspiracy theorists, zero. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So it seems you can make a clean, stable footprint in a vacuum. Look at that. We made a footprint inside of a vacuum. And there was no water vapor, which is what this conspiracy theory is all about. Well, the gravity is six times stronger on Earth than it is on the moon. So if we made a footprint here, we're definitely making one on the moon. So I guess this conspiracy theory is busted. 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 Now NASA will let us out of here. Okay, now what's wrong with that? Look closely. The depression in their moon dust simulant is only about a few millimeters deep. Not deep enough for the particles to collapse. In fact, if we look at their depressions made with dry sand, we can see a clear print in the dry sand too. Not only did they screw up their regular simulant experiment, they were also careless with their own visual aid for the demonstration of their opponent's statements. Make it shallow enough and even dry sand will leave a distinct print. In the Apollo 11 post-flight press conference, Buzz Aldrin claimed his boots sank inches into the lunar soil, not millimetres. When you were carrying out that incredible moonwalk, did you find that the surface was equally firm anywhere, or were there harder and softer spots that you could detect? The uh, first part of your question, the, the surface did vary in its thickness of penetration. Somewhere uh, in, in rather flat regions, uh, the, the uh, footprint would penetrate perhaps a half an inch or sometimes only a quarter of an inch and gave a very firm response. In other regions near the edges of these craters, uh, we could find that the foot would, would sink down maybe two, three, possibly four inches. And in, in the slope, of course, the uh, various edges of the footprint would, might go on up to six or seven inches, and uh, compacting this material would, would tend to uh, produce a slight sideways motion as it was compacted on the material underneath it. So uh, we feel that uh, you, you cannot always tell just by looking at the terrain what the exact resistance will be as your foot sinks into a, a point of firm contact. So one must be quite cautious in, in moving around in this rough terrain.